Okay, cool. Um, so here's the rundown. Here's the example that we're working with. So the question is, um, how should we rig a head slash face? Um, and the answer is very, very simply, um, because uh, it's a pain and a half uh, to rig the whole thing. Um, all these little points. A, a lot of like auto rigging stuff will start you off with like, oh, there's a bone here, and oh, there's a bone here, and there's one here, and then there's like, they're all over the face. And it's just, not only does it not wait, like automatically wait to the face well, it doesn't look good when you manipulate it after it's been weight painted. And it takes forever to weight paint each of these bones and decide what sphere of influence they have. So it's just, it's a waste of time. Um, and I've discovered this over a long thing of trial and error. So this is one of my earlier projects that I will reference probably forever. It is um, Mr. Hermes, and you can see his rig here. Um, this was a an auto rig that I did. So I, I did, uh, sorry, this was an auto rig. This is a, a manual rig that I did. So I made each of these bones. I made all of these controllers because um, I was in character animation at the time, and I wanted to do a rig that was better than the rigs I was working with. So all of these finger controllers and stuff, those are all... Um, those are all, all custom um, in this iRig and stuff like that. And you can get very, very um, complex with the controllers. Like this one controls the jaw out here. So if I go to uh, pose mode and I take this guy, I can just drag it around and it opens the jaw. Um, and that's, that's the way it works. But if you look at the face... Um, the bones are very simple. So if you ignore everything from the neck down, so this is the the neck controller, uh, ignore that. But we just have one bone in the head. We have a jaw bone that has kind of these um, displaced bones just to make sure that it, it weight painted automatically on the outside. Um, then we have a nose bone, which does not move at all. Um, it's literally just there to keep the nose stationary um, and then off of the head we have these four head bones which are just there to keep the edge of the jaw stationary they don't move either um, and then we have eye bones and that's it um, but of course you can see that he's his his eyes are glazed over because um, I lost the texture this is so far far back in the past um, but you can see that his eyes move, his eyelids move, and it's like, what? How do they move if there's no bones? Um, and his brow furrows, and he looks sad, and his expressions change, and his vowels change as he's opening his mouth. Um, and what what's going on here is I'm using something called uh, shape keys. So... Um, if I go back here and I click on the model itself, and over here there's, uh, let me move myself so I'm out of the way here. Okay, um, so over in this little corner right here, you've got all of your uh, different uh, vertex groups and stuff like that. Um, and under that there's shape keys. So we start out by adding a basic shape key, which with this little add button. And that basically freezes all of the points where they are um, just as a default. And then you can start adding shape keys. So for this one, um, I have something called happy. And happy um, actually manipulates the points in the face so that he has a happy expression. And this is a value system, so um, I can add a certain amount of happy. So you can see that as I add happy, his face morphs into a happier expression or not. Um, and you can combine them. So generally, you only need happy, sad, angry um, to make pretty much any combination of, of expressions. If you want something that's in pain, it's sad and a little bit of angry with the, uh, with the eyes closed. That's it. Um, and here I did uh, lips wide and lips tall for the, the vowels. So if I do lips tall, it makes more of a U shape. Um, and I can close that. Um, I can actually go negative on that, and that will go 
totally flat lipped so it, it pinches the lips closed uh lips wide i can go out and that makes more of an eh um sound and i can actually use that i'm i told my wife just today that um you can actually make any combination of vowels just by programming in u and a um because e is just a a slightly less stressed a with um a little bit of u in it so a uh now i'm just making funny faces uh but yeah so that's that's how it goes um and you can do it with anything so here i have eyes open and closed so i can manipulate how wide the eyes are um or i can close them entirely um and i'm messing up all of these values but it doesn't matter it'll wipe them once we go back um and yeah you can actually program those in with keyframes so you can see all of these keyframes down here are actually being um they, they belong to this uh set of uh stuff so yeah i can make him extra sad if i want i can make him not sad i can make him extra angry um but basically all that i'm doing is i'm just going into edit mode on these values and i am oh my god that's horrifying um i'm dragging these points around with proportional editing so um if i want an eyebrow say like i want to make um well let's do one right now since this is a uh, kind of a, a dead fish um model anyway uh so i would go i already have my basis down that's just basic um so i'll go down to the bottom and i'll add one and it'll add a new key and we'll call this key uh raised eyebrow and in raised eyebrow, um, while it's selected here, I am going to go up to uh, edit mode. So that's going to bring us into this horror uh, mode. Um, I'm just going to click a part of the eyebrow that's, that's kind of centrally located. I'm going to make sure proportional editing is on, and I'm going to make sure that connected only is on, because that will make sure that it's just the points around the edge. Um, and then I'm just gonna um, just gonna raise the eyebrow a little bit, and we're not gonna do too much. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm assigning these points to the value of one in raised eyebrow. Um, so that that raises an eyebrow, and that's one. Um, so I go back, and obviously that's not there. But if I He's angry right now because I made him angry for some reason. Um, if I go value up on raised eyebrow, raised eyebrow, there it is. Um, I can even change these values so that he has a negative raised eyebrow. So I can go negative one on the minimum range. Um, and that means that I can take the raised eyebrow way down and it can go the opposite direction. Um, so you can play with that, especially with like closed and open eyes. So you can just program the closed eyes and then give it a negative value. Um, and it will, will open the eyes wider in that negative value. But for now, let's go back to zero cause that's silly. Um, and I can also change the max range. So say the eyebrow isn't raising enough. It's kind of a dangerous game to play, but we can do this. Um, we'll go here and then we'll just raise the eyebrow up to, so now we've got all the way to three. And of course it looks really funky, but it does give me some more range to work with if I didn't get exactly what I wanted out of it. So, uh, that's how you do it. That is 100% the way that I recommend rigging a face. It will save you so much time. You saw how quickly it was for me to just make one raised eyebrow. Um, out of all of those and uh no no rigging required it's totally weighted to the the head piece um i can still move it with the skeleton all it moves are the points that i move in the uh the keys so there you go i hope that was helpful um just a quick tip